<clears throat> chapter 16 of the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, let's, uh, let's read this old Scripture. We're not going to read all of it. You already know most of it. You've heard it preached probably more times than, uh, than what you'd like to hear it preached again. But here we go. <clears throat> Verse number 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, and that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. We'd like to preach to you just a little while. <clears throat> Lord, being our helper, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. 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 The it at that time hadn't come into its rightful position. So Jesus <clears throat> referred to the church as it. Amen. It was in the future tense. But there was a day when he established the church. No one's ever doubted it. Ever since the day of Pentecost, the world has recognized the church as being an organization, organization from God. Can you say amen? amen? They may say a lot of rotten things about us. And we deserve some of it. Amen. But they still must reckon us from God. Amen. Nothing else in this world can explain the existence of the church except God has built it. Amen. Amen. Countries have come and gone. Nations have come and gone. Kings have risen and sit on thrones and have fallen. Wars have been fought. Boundaries have been changed, but the church still remains. It doesn't only speak English. It speaks every tongue. Amen. You can hear the praise of God in our world in every tongue. Come on now. Not only is it in our nation, but before it got to our shores, it was in Europe. And it was in Asia. And it was in Asia Minor. And it was in Africa. Amen. And it spread until it is all over this globe. Just as Jesus said it would when the gospel is preached. Amen. In every nation. Come on now. There's a Chinese pastor stood on the border of old mainland China and pointed and said, there's a million believers over there and there's not a hypocrite among them. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We know that there are believers in Russia. We know there's believers in Poland, Czechoslovakia. Amen. England, Ireland, Canada, America. Mexico, South America. Amen. There's even believers in Alaska. Come on now. And we sit as recognized as the church of the living God. If Jesus hadn't have built it, it would have crumbled. Do you know how diverse the church is? Well, just take a look at your neighbor. Do you understand him? You understand her? Well, some folks live together and don't, understand. <laughs> don't even understand one another. Help me preach. But the Lord will take people just like me and just like you and glue us together 
and call us a church. Amen. 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 Oh, the church is not made up of microphones and carpet and wood and instruments and all of the things that we feel like now we must have to have a church. That didn't have anything to do with the church. The church that Jesus built is built out of people just like you. God's not dependent on this block and, and brick and, and all of this to, to get people saved. He's dependent on you. In fact, if this church is standing, one of these days it will burn down. Everything, flatwood, will burn down. Ashland will burn down. Ohio will melt till there's no boundaries. Kentucky will melt. The mountains will be humbled. The sea will melt away and boil away and there'll be no more sea. So God's not dependent on these things. He's dependent on you, you are the church that Jesus is building. Amen. 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 Brother Benny said he got saved uh, 40 some years ago, 47 years ago. Well, that's a little while before I got here. So he's been saved longer than I've been born. The church was here before Brother Benny got saved. Come on now. Am I right? The church was here before then. And if you just go on and inquire, it was here before those folks preached the gospel that got Brother Benny saved. Somebody had to preach to them. Help me now. The church would stop if it wasn't for people. Amen. Jesus is depending on you. Oh, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you sitting off a tight. Don't be afraid. I just want you to know now, uh, God's dependent on His church. There's not another organization that is God-ordained in this world to do the will of God but the church. He's not going to turn to the Red Cross. He's not going to turn to any of these benevolent societies. He's depending on His church. Amen. He's depending on it in these last days to stand and be counted. Come on now. You believe that? He's depending on the church. Amen. And he said that only the church would be the only organization in this world that the devil yes. could not conquer. Yes. The only invincible power of our day Amen. that the devil hasn't conquered, infiltrated, destroyed and corrupted is the true church of God. Amen. Everything this man made has turned and shown their true colors. They've adopted doctrines of devils. Amen. Oh, they say they know God, but by their works, they deny Him. In the midst of all of this apostasy, in the midst of all of this uh, hypocrisy, there's still a blood-bought, sanctified, Holy Ghost, fire-baptized group of people, amen, that's standing on their feet and being counted on in this day to do a work for God. Somebody shout amen. You see, Jesus said, I will build my church. If that part of the Scripture is correct, and it is, Amen. the church has done just what Jesus has said. It sits on this globe, an immovable object. Amen. 
The devil cannot and never will have the power to shut down the church of God. Somebody said, that's most to no. If you had read your Bible, you would have said, Amen. It's the truth. The Apostle Paul said, even of the church, at the time of the resurrection, when the dead in Christ shall arise, there shall be some alive and remaining. That's the church. Huh? Well, if we look at it in a poor uh, view of, of what's coming, somebody said, the church can't make it. I want you to know I've read the book. There shall be some remaining and alive to the hour that Jesus comes. If the devil had such a good program, he would have seen to it that none was alive. But he can't touch that which is blood bought. Amen. And for every one that he destroys, there's others that arise in their stead. When one falls, God will raise up another to stand up. Amen. You see, Jesus said, I will build my church. It's not my church. It's not Brother Grizzle's church. It's not your church. In case you've got a church, boss, I want to serve notice on you. It's not your church. I don't know if you got one or not. But if you have to take a message to him, tell him it's not his church. You might as well get your hands off of it. It's not your church. Amen. That's right. It's no man's church. Amen. This church Jesus has already claimed in its infancy. While it was just a number of twelve, he turned to one of the twelve and said, Look, I'm going to take men just like you, and I'm going to build my church. All I ask them to do to get this church to start is to believe that I am the Son of God. Amen. That's all Peter said. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah. Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. God was picking men out right then to start the church. Jesus was going to use men just like me and you to build a church. On the day of Pentecost, he had gathered together 120 people out of over 500 brethren that had seen him. He, he gathered together 120, put them in an upper room to keep them elevated above the world. It's hard at eye level, amen, when you're looking right out at the world to keep your mind on God. So he took them up into an upper room so they'd have to go to the window and look down to see the world. Amen. So he put him in an upper room and said, Terry, Terry, until you are endued, until you are empowered, Terry, until something happens to you, Terry, until the promise of the Father comes, Terry, until the third person of the Godhead comes, Terry, till the Holy Ghost arrives, Terry, till he gets here in his person, Terry, till he glues you together. Terry till he molds you together. Terry till he hooks on to you and lifts you in a new power. Jesus said to these disciples, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll give you another comforter. Did he not say it, church? I said, did he not say it, church? How many Holy Ghost believers I got here tonight? Raise your hand and wave it to God. Well, no wonder some of you can't say amen to it. Great God of heaven. He wouldn't even let the first church down the street without it. Some of you come to church every night without it. Amen. He wouldn't even let the preacher stand up to preach without it. Here folks come to church years without it. Somehow we messed up the book of Acts. We need to come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I see now that the book of Acts is not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. 
It was the act of the third person. His gospel, his way, his power, his demonstration. And what he could do to men and women who would submit themselves under his hand. And let him lead and guide the church. The church arose a mighty army. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not. I like that. The devil don't like it. I like it. <laughs> Amen. Some folks said, I got a good insurance policy. I got a better one. Shall not. Amen. That's right. We got the state overseer watching after us. I got shall not. Amen. I got the Pope in control. I tell you what. I got shall not on my side. Hallelujah. The devil's got to tear down shall not before he can tear down the church. Did you hear me? I said he's got to get an eraser, amen, that can get into the Word of God. The Bible said of the testimony of the Lord, they're forever settled in heaven. Amen. When that shall not come out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, it was caught by the breath of the Holy Ghost, pinned down forever, so that every trembling saint of God could turn that book open to Matthew, turn down to the 16th chapter, reach down there, my friend, uh, to the 18th verse, and said, And the Bible said, and the Word of God said, and the Holy Ghost said, and Jesus said, The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus said it. The gates of hell shall not. I said, Jesus said it. The gates of hell shall not. All we've got to do to be assured of our success is to find out if Jesus built this church right here. Amen. And all we've got to do is to prove it is come up with enough evidence to convict us of being a Christian. We can find enough evidence among us to convict us of really being a Bible Christian. Shall not a work for us. Huh? To be a Bible Christian, you must be born again. And the church said, to be a Bible Christian, you must be sanctified. And the church said, to be a Bible Christian, you... <laughs> Hallelujah. Some folks said, well, the thief on the cross didn't get the Holy Ghost. He had sure been expected to find the upper room if he hadn't got crucified. He went to heaven without the Holy Ghost. You ain't nailed to no tree. You've been coming to this church for years and still ain't got it. What's your excuse? Hallelujah. You have to find an excuse sooner or later. How many revivals you been in? How many camp meetings you sat through and still don't have it? Oh, now you're going to get hurt at me, ain't you? Well, I, 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 he's going to make you mad or glad. Amen. No, that's not being a smart aleck. That's just telling you the truth. You sit there peppered and petted, and you're never going to get enough backbone to do anything. You're going to be a pampered, petted Christian and be worthless to the kingdom of God. You need to get so happy, you'll seek the baptism, or you need to get so mad, you'll pray through and start all over again. Amen. we got too many people sitting in the pews now that don't have any contact with heaven. Too many people sitting in the pews now, amen, that don't have any power to pray anything through. Too many people sitting in the pews now that's lost their anointing to sing, lost their anointing to pray, lost their anointing to withstand, lost their anointing to resist. Amen. You see, it said, I'll build my church. We've got to find evidence to make sure it's his church. Amen. 
He said, well, Brother Benny, do you really think I need the Holy Ghost? No, I'm not a Holy Ghost or nothing preacher. No, sir. I don't think there's a choice. Amen. I don't think there's a choice. Do you? Do you really think there's a choice? If there is, there's another gospel. If there is a choice, then there's another gospel. For this one says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled. Right? Be ye filled. Okay, man, that's in the imperative. means be filled now, be filled tomorrow, be filled next day. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. And the last day you stand on this earth, you're to be filled. Amen. There's no such thing as being filled one day and un unfilled the next day. It's be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled every day. Get up. Look for the fountain where the glory comes out. Hold your vessel out before God and say, Lord, I'm an earthen vessel. I want glory in it. I'm an earthen vessel. I need power in it. I'm an earthen vessel. I can crack. I can crack unless there's something in me to keep me. I can fall unless there's something in it to keep me. I'm, I, can, I can fall to temptation unless there's something in me to keep me. And I want you to know that something that's needed in the church is the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. And it said, These signs shall follow those that believe. Didn't it say it? Who said it? Not the Apostle Paul. Not Peter. Jesus said it. These signs shall follow those that believe. Now church must have enough. Amen. So that these things follow. They don't follow any church. In fact, you try to practice them in some church, they'll kick you out. Amen. When anybody that rejects the moving of the Spirit of God is saying to you, we're not that church. Huh? Isn't that right? Any church that tells you it died in the days of the apostles is not that church. Amen. Anybody tells you talking in tongues is of the devil, is not that church. Come on. We've got to have enough evidence to convict us of being that church. That only comes when we have a real, genuine experience in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd say 15 years ago, this church would already been up and on their toes and saying, seek them. Huh? Am I right? I wasn't here 15 years ago, so I don't know, but am I right, Sister Ben? Amen. It, it, didn't, didn't, it just didn't get used to the smoke. It was, it was raised up in the fire. It, it's the fire that wants to hang things like that on the wall. It's somebody that says, I've got the power and here's the evidence. Come on now. You know that's right. But we can sit back on laurels and write our little church histories and say how it used to be and point to a wall that says in 1948 or we can take down the 1948 and say 1988, 1989, the power of God is still in the church and the church is still resisting the devil and the church is still victorious. Oh, great God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. You see, it said, Shall not. The devil don't like that. But he can't do a thing about it. If he could have done a thing, something about it, he'd have got him on the day of Pentecost 
when he could have tore up 120 of them and stopped the church. He couldn't handle 120 of them. Amen. When they staggered out of the upper room, he didn't want nothing to do with them. Amen. They stood on the sidelines and said, these are drunken. Amen. But then the, the Spirit of God moved on Peter. And when Peter stood up, the eleven stood with him. And they began to preach. And when they began to preach, the gates of hell began to move back. Amen. Out of one preaching service, thousands got saved. Amen. Out of one preaching service, people changed their mind. People got converted. People come out of sin just because the Holy Ghost stood up with 11 men and one preached the gospel. The church did not depend on the treasury to get it through. The fourth chapter, you can find them going to, going to prayer. A lame man laying there at the gate, rattling his cups and said, won't you help me out in some way? Peter told the truth. Hey, Amen. I believe he did. Silver and gold have I none. A lot of preachers can't say that today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But he could. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. This is the evidence. He put himself on the spot, didn't he? He's either going to come up with it, or the devil's going to wipe the church out right there in Jerusalem. All they need to do is get the man who preached on Pentecost in a falsehood. Get him to where he can't do what he says he can do. And Peter said, such as I have, I give to thee. And he reached down and got a hold of him and lifted him up. Amen. He said, in the name of Jesus. Come on. He didn't have no silver. He didn't have no gold. All he had was a living Savior and a baptism in the Holy Ghost. And he laid hands on an impossibility. Stood an impossibility on his feet. And watched the Holy Ghost give him strength. And the man who was impossible to walk went leaping and jumping and praising God. It shut the church house down. Woo! Huh? Didn't it happen? In the name of Jesus, and as rise up and walk. And he did. Didn't he, church? He sure did. Amen. When they beat them and straightly charged them, don't you ever do such things like that again. Don't you preach or teach in this name. Hey Amen. They let them go. They went to their own company rejoicing. Hey Amen. They wasn't a griper in the middle of them. Hey Amen. There they was going back rejoicing. Back beat. Hey Amen. Brow beat. Cast out. The priest didn't want them. Hey Amen. Nobody wanted them. They went back to their own company. Hey Amen. God's despised few. You know, holiness folks takes a tuck head anymore. When the, when, the, when the assembly God don't want us and the church of God don't want us and the Nazarenes don't want us and the Episcopalians won't have nothing to do with us and everybody in town looks down on us, we used to wrap, we used to wrap ourselves up in it. When they called us the Holy Roller, we just said, God, give me something to live holy with and put some fire in my soul. Amen. They turned us out of the Baptist church and turned us out of the Methodist church and told us never to come back with that tongue talking. We didn't. We went to our own company. And God breathed on us and raised up a mighty army. Hallelujah. I want you to know there's holiness, folks, from coast to coast, from the east to the west, from the north to the south. They're up every holler. They're on Main Street now with the holiness message of the power of God. We didn't get run off. We didn't get defeated. We didn't get hurt when they turned their back on us. God smiled on us and began to build the church. And the holiness church stands true today of God's mighty power. Whew. Upon this rock I will. And he has. I said, and he has. And then he said, I will build my church. And, and, just so you won't forget that they're there. And the gates of hell 
where the flood comes out. The real church meets the devil head on. Amen. The gates prevail against us. We're not stuck over in some wall. Amen. Some cubby hole. We're right out where the gates and the floods of the devil, amen, comes against us. That's right. He hates us with a passion. Don't you ever forget that. I said the devil hates you. Amen. If you want it a little bit straighter, he hates your guts. And if he had his way, he'd spill them. That's right. If he could, he'd stop a sister that testified over here. He'd stop her in a minute. Hey, man, shut that kind of talk down. Yes, sir, you better believe it. You don't want nobody getting up and calling television sin. Well, that's the way that he floods America. Right through the portals of a television. He puts adultery and fornication, lying and theft and murder right into the front rooms of America. He floods it with ungodliness, sells his beer, glorifies his sex. Amen. It does everything right through it. But the church of God, the living, true, breathing church of God, stands up right in the gates of hell and calls it what it is, sin. Amen, anyway. We don't hide from it. We stand in the gates of hell with the promise, shall not, as our only hope. Well, I'm no match for the devil. I know that. I still wear the scars of his chains. I still have the scars on my body from when he had mastered me. Amen. I have come from hell to preach a gospel of deliverance. No one believe it, amen, if you hadn't come through it yourself. That's right. Come on now. You might as well just understand that nobody's going to believe you if you tell them you ain't never done nothing wrong. They say, man, you won't understand then. But tell them you waited through hell. Tell them that God saved you from sin. Hey, man, you don't have to go into the details of your sin. Just tell them I've got scars to prove. I was once in the kingdom that withstood the church, but I got transformed. Hey, man, I got transformed. I got taken from the darkness and put in the light. I got taken from chains and set in liberty. I got dug up out of the pit. Hallelujah. Set on the rock. I am now a follower of the Lamb. I'm here to tell you His blood can cleanse from sin. I'm here to tell you the power of the Lord can set at liberty the captive. We are the church, and the church is what God called the liberator. We are the liberated, and we are the liberator. Woo! These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He come to set the captive free, and he's doing it today. We are the church of the living God. He said, ye shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Let the church say amen. amen. And ye shall cast out devils. That's meeting it right at the gate. In the Old Testament, the gate was where the authority set. It was the gate where Lot set. Amen. It was the gate where the, the justicials of that time set the judges conducted their business at the gate. The king stood at the gate and watched his armies come and go. And the Bible said, And the gates of hell. The marshaled forces as they send them out and they come back with reports. Amen. There's only one church yet that stands, amen, unaffected by the onslaught of sin. And that's holiness. Oh, yes, we lose one rank or another. Glory to God. But if you read the book of Ezekiel, it said that the Lord looks for a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Somebody dropped out when I got in. Amen. That's right. The old preachers over home when I was a young preacher, they were still preaching with power. 
Amen. As I grew older, they grew older. And one day they dropped out. And God moved me in. Now I'm getting to be the old preacher. And there's some behind me. And as they get older, I get older. But I'm not going to drop out of that. Not drop out of the gap until death drops me. I must be faithful unto death. I must stand firm in the faith. I must resist the devil. I must fight the good fight of faith. Woo! Woo! Great God of heaven. How Holy Ghost in this earth. Hallelujah. I said, there's a Holy Ghost in a church. I said, there's a Holy Ghost in mankind. He is the difference between defeat and victory. Ye shall. Mortal men just like me and you, Jesus said. And ye shall cast out devils. This over all the power of your enemy, the devil. Ye shall tread upon scorpion. Take up serpent. No, I don't I'm not a snake handler. I want you to know that I have handled a few with a hole and a shotgun and a 38 and a rock and a heel. They didn't need handling. That's the same way I'm about the devil. I don't believe in playing with the devil neither. Amen. If you're going to get a hold of him, do something with him. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to latch on and have a fight with the devil. Fight it out. Get in there. Stand your ground. In fact, the Bible tells me, amen, when I've done all to stand, to stand therefore. Take the shield of faith and I can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. It said, submit yourself therefore to the mighty hand of God and resist the devil and he will what? He will flee from you. Because when you stand for God, God stands for you. The devil may be able to handle me, but he can't handle God. The devil may be able to woolly me around, but he can't do Jesus that way. The devil may be able to trip me up, but he can't do the Holy Ghost that way. So when the Holy Ghost comes in and the Son abides in my heart and the God of heaven comes down in me and I become a habitation of God through the Spirit, then I become a member of the body of Jesus Christ. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. My life is hid in Christ. And Christ is hid in God. And God is ahead of all things. And Christ is the head of the church. Oh! Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the devil don't want you to believe this. He don't want you to believe this one. But if you believe in a hell, and you believe in people going to hell, and I believe in a church that's got enough power to save them, don't you? Huh? Don't you believe the church has got enough power to bind together? What Jesus told to Peter after he said, Shall not? He said, I give unto you the keys. Amen. Didn't he say it? I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Well, I know the, the Catholics jumped on that, and one Catholic told a, one of our good brethren, he said, uh, he said Peter, St. Peter got the, uh, got the keys, and he was the first pope of the church of Rome. And the guy said, that's all right. He said, oh, Pete can keep the keys. He said, I know the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He can keep the keys. I know the door. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't need the keys. I've got the right to the door. Amen. That's right. I knocked and he opened and I went in. And when I went in, he came in. We've been supping together ever since. I'm not outside one in. I'm on the inside one deeper. Deeper, deeper. You know, I pray higher, higher every day. Oh, glory to God. We are the church. We are the salt of the earth. Amen. That's the reason why we're sprinkled out so far. You don't want uh, 
salt in your gravy equal to the flour? Huh? No, no, nobody wants that. But we want enough salt in the gravy to season it. Amen. My grandma hardly ever used a cookbook. It was a pinch of this and a dash of that and a handful of that. She just threw it in there. It always come out good. And that's the way the Lord does the church. He never measures you up by physical ability. He never measures you up by your monetary worth. He never measured you up and said, like Saul, who he stood shoulders above those in Israel. He looks at you and says, can you stick it out? Amen. That's what he says. Can you stick it out? And he took a little man like Paul. Tradition says he was uh, probably just a little bit uh, uh, under five foot. He is bent, a little skinny guy with a hooked nose and a bald head, amen, with slurred speech. And the Lord took him, amen, and put his hand on him. And Paul turned prison houses into jail houses, amen, didn't he do it? I said, I'm glad heaven knows me. I'm glad heaven knows me. I'm glad heaven called my name. Whew. Raise your hands and worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, I'm glad heaven knows me. I said, I'm glad heaven knows me. I'm glad heaven knows me. Hallelujah. It recognizes everybody who has the Spirit of Christ. For it said, without the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. I'm glad heaven knows me. Heaven recognizes me because of the Spirit that I have in my heart. The church recognizes me because of the Spirit that bears witness. Oh, glory to God. This, this church has power. Jesus said to it, did he not? Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That's why the devil don't like to make too many trips to a wholeness church. He'll get discovered. He'll get uncovered. He'll get pointed out. And if he's not sure enough, going to stay around long enough, he'll get cast out. At least it used to be that way, didn't it? Huh? They'd come into church, the Holy Ghost tell on them. Wouldn't he do it? He let somebody come along for a false doctrine, the Holy Ghost first one, meet him at the door. Am I right? Come in mixed up. Holy Ghost to tell you, warn you, there's something about that spirit. There's something about his spirit, something about her spirit. Just don't feel right. Just don't act right. Even if they got up and shouted, there's something about the shout wasn't right. Amen. Even if they tried to talk in tongues, something about the tongue didn't sound right. Amen. Come on now. Am I right? Somebody shout amen. That's right. We had power to bind them. Amen. We stood up before prayed, amen, and said, God, bind this spirit. Hallelujah. One night preaching at the church, I even forgot what I preached on. I just remembered at the end of the message, I told the young man, I said, go open that door. I said, go open that door. Tonight, we're showing the devil the door. Amen. He went over and opened that door, and the whole church stood up behind the pastor. Amen. And said, devil, tonight, we're giving you an addiction notice. You are leaving. Amen. Oh, great God of heaven, that young man stood by the door and said, You never felt such a thing as it was when it went out the door. When the church stands up and realizes its enemy, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your enemy's not Benny Sutherland. It's not Benny Grizzle. No, sir. Our enemy's not flesh and blood. The devil may be using somebody. He may be using some dupe. But that's not our enemy. Our enemy, man, is principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. 
this in high places. Our enemy still got a name. It's called Lucifer, Satan, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil. And when the church gets mad at the devil and what the devil's doing to our community and what the devil's doing to our state and what the devil's doing to our nation and begins to decide to fight the devil instead of one another, revival will break out and people will be liberated. I think I just got close to home, didn't I? That's right. I've come to preach. If I can, I'm going to find you. That's right. If I can, I'm going to help you. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. We'll stop fighting one another. And the old people turning on the young and the young turning on the old. Amen. And arguing who's going to rule the church, uh, the church and who's going to run the business. Amen. If we'll get together and say, praise God, we've got one pastor. And everybody recognize one pastor. Amen. And say to the pastor, lead us. We're going to follow you. Help me preach. You can't, you can't explain to God why you don't honor your pastor. You can't explain to God why you don't obey them that have the rule over you. It's God's book, amen. It was written by the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me the Holy Ghost has got another interpretation. It said for the pastor, amen, to lead the flock. Didn't it say it? It said for the fast, for the pastor to take oversight of the flock of God. It said of the pastor, amen, to make the decisions. If you've got something to say about the pastor, you should say, Oh, God, fill my pastor with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a fresh and a new Set him on fire with the power of God. Woo! He said, I give you power to bind. You don't have to say, then come to church and the devil's been on my shoulder all day long. Shame on you. How long did it take you to find out it was him? All day? If I talk on the telephone and I don't recognize who it is, I said, who is this? Huh? If I recognize a friendly voice, you, can't, you, you, you just can't uh, misinterpret Brother Troy when he calls. There's one Brother Troy. He sounds like Brother Troy no matter where you put him. He's Brother Troy. Amen. In fact, he's the only guy I know of that likes me well enough to call me honey. When somebody called me and said, honey, I know who that is. I only got one guy loves me that much. Amen. And I, 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 I know the voice of my shepherd. And when he talks to me, hey, I, I don't get this. I don't get the, all disoriented. No, sir. I say, that, is that you, Lord? If there's a doubt, I say, is that you, Lord? Hey, man, he doesn't say, well, it might be and it could be. Huh? Huh? No, sir. No, sir. Hallelujah. I've talked to him long enough in these 25 years that I've been saved to know his voice. Amen. Hallelujah. When he talks to me, I don't have to ask, is that you... I know his voice. Hallelujah. And I'm willing to follow that voice to the end of the earth. I'm willing to go wherever he goes. I'm willing to go wherever he leads. No matter the cost, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering. God, give me grace to follow my Lord. Make me a soldier of the cross. Don't let me be a whimpering, whining, nagging, carnal Christian that sits in a pew and demands everybody else to sit still because they don't have enough power to get up off of their pew. God, help me to be full of the Spirit of God and alive. Amen. Help me to be alive and able while I've got the strength to stand up and make up the gap and stand there 
word make up the gap means put your life in jeopardy. Amen. Well, you're going to meet the devil. If you ain't met him yet, hang around. You will. Hang around the hole in this church. He'll be here. He'll be here after a while. Amen. Paul met him. He said, you child of the devil. Oh, you wouldn't like a pastor like that, would you? Somebody walk in and looked like he's influential and looked like he had something, you know, they could offer the church, maybe a little extra tithe in the offering plate. And the devil don't mind paying tithes neither. He'll kick it in as long as you'll let him sit. Because if he sits long enough, he's going to gain some influence. Amen. That's right. So don't always base it on how good they are and how much they smile when they kick in the offering. Got to have more evidence than that. Let's see how they fall behind the pastor. Let's see how they mark up to the doctrine. If the pastor preaches that you shouldn't wear gold, and the Bible says at least in two places in the New Testament, you're not to wear gold. If the Bible says it and the pastor says it and the Holy Ghost agrees with it, what are you doing with it in this church? Hello. Let's wait and see what they do with that. Huh? Let's wait and see what to do with their pants or their cut-off jeans. Let's wait and see what to do with their tank top and their haircuts. Let's wait and see how they measure up and see how they pray at the altar. See how much they weep and mourn and see how much they get sanctified. Amen. Then you find them getting Bible evidence behind them. After a while, they'll prove out to themselves they are really the children of God. For the Bible says in Romans 8, For as many as are led by the Spirit... They are the sons of God. <laughs> Can the church shout amen? amen? Hallelujah. Where was I at? Right here on the devil, wasn't I? That's when it got quiet, wasn't it, Brother Lloyd? That's what I thought. It was pretty good until I got over on him. It got too many sympathizers in the church with the devil. Amen. You begin to pick on it. They said, oh, you shouldn't preach that. You're allowed to offend them. If I don't preach it, they're liable to go to hell. Huh? That's right. If you preach it, you offend them. If you don't preach it, they go to hell and you're chargeable. And God may send me to hell because I didn't have enough of the Holy Ghost to preach it. I tell you, I got saved out of sin. I don't want to go to hell. Do you? And the thing to do is to believe what Jesus said. If you are bound, there is a church that can pray the prayer of faith and loosen you. Am I right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me turn over here and read just a little bit if I can. <clears throat> turn over here to the epistle of Peter. <clears throat> Praise God. Wait till I get my glasses on, sister, and I'll tell you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Peter, chapter 5. <clears throat> the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not, a, not a for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. It didn't say elders. It said elder, singular, pastor, younger, submit. Hello? Submit. Don't rebel. Submit. 
Amen. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth you, careth for you. Verse 8 says, Be sober. Be vigilant. You hear me, church? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may what? Help out? Show you a good time? What's his intent? You mean eat up? Devour? Destroy? Your adversary? Your enemy? Has one desire for you? To devour you. Huh? And some folks said, well, church ain't treating me good. I'll just think I'll backslide right into the mouth of the lion. If, if, if a town marshal or town sheriff or town policeman, whatever it was, come run in this building and tell you there's a mad dog outside, how many would like to go outside and pet him? Huh? How many would like to go outside and pet him? Well, there's a line loose in Flatwood. It's devouring people every day. Amen. And the only reason why he hasn't took, and he has, I'll guarantee you, I just felt checked to the Spirit, and he has made his little rounds into this church and drug lambs right from your pew and devoured them right in your face. Huh? And you're not going to get mad? Well, you said, Christians don't get mad. I beg your pardon. Huh? Have you read the book? It says, be angry. Sin not. And tell me I couldn't get angry at the devil. When I see some things, it makes my blood run hot. When I see some hypocrite trying to come into church to get one of my boys or girls... He don't meet with a friendly pastor's face and how you doing today. I zero in on him like a hawk does the rabbit. Amen. And he feels the piercing eyes of somebody looking at him. And I want him to know that I'm a watching. Amen. And if I catch him trying, I'm going to be right back there. Hallelujah. I may not be tough. And I got about 230 pounds. It's hard to push around. In fact, when I was uh, when I was on the devil's side, I didn't run. Now, if I'm going to change sides, I'm still not going to run. Help me preach. Didn't the Bible say resist him? Didn't it say resist? How do you resist? Lay down. Shut up. It means stand up. Take a stand. Pull your sword. Do battle. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Amen. Well, you keep on getting quieter, don't you? Am I preaching too long? Maybe the clock's my enemy. (laughs) 
whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish. Strengthen. Settle you. After a while, He ain't going to do nothing with us. Did you hear me? After a while, we get perfect. After a while, we get established. We get settled. And it said, God make you. Just like it said, and Jesus built the church. After a while, God makes you more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Amen. Praise God. Can the church say amen? Amen. I hope I'm trying. I'm trying to help you. He said, be afflicted and mourn. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He shall. And he shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Flatwood, y'all listen to me now. There's a time to come on down and say to the Lord, I need more than I've got. There's a time to come on down and say, I can't rest on yesterday. I need more now than I ever needed in my life. Out of the gates of hell has come a flood. We've seen the ravagings of the ways of, the, uh, of sin. AIDS that cannot be cured. Amen. Diseases that are worse than we ever imagined. Two out of three marriages being wrecked. Come on now. Children being molested. Children being beaten. Amen. Children being sold. A father over in Indiana, in Indianapolis, was arrested. He was arrested for this very fact. He would take his two girls that he had and take them up to Indianapolis and sell them for a weekend to any man who had the money. I'm not talking about old girls. I'm talking about young girls. 10, 11, and 12. And a dad put them on the auction block. And to the dirty devil, uh, whoever had enough money took his girls for the weekend. And you say the gates of hell aren't trying to push the church? I want you to know they're coming out like a flood. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, there's only one standard that can be raised against it. And that's holiness. For this is the only sanctuary that's left where people fear God. Amen. Where people fear sin. Where people know who the enemy is. Amen. And where people challenging him. This is the only standard that God can raise. And in this last day, it's not a hope of some organization coming to the forefront. It's the hope of the holiness people standing up with enough power to challenge the devil. Amen. And if we're ever going to challenge him and stop the flood, revival's got to break out in our hearts. Did you hear me? Revival's got to break out in our hearts. How long is it going to be till you join the ranks of the counted? Amen. Can God count on you? He wants to count on you. Can God count on you? Amen. I said, can God count on you? You've got to make the commitment. I said, can God count on you? Are you going to be here one night and then miss four nights? Can God count on you? Hey, Amen. Is anything, can anything come up and keep you out of church? I want to know, can God count on you? Hey, Amen. Come on now. Let's be honest with one another. I said, can God count on you? Can he count on you to pray things to press? Can pray things through? Can God count on you? 
Can God count on you to carry a burden and weep for souls? Can God count on you? Amen. In this world, I want to know, can God count on you? Can God count on your faithfulness? Can God count on you to stand in the gap even if it means everybody's friendship is at jeopardy? Will you stand for God and right? Will you stand for the word of truth? Amen. If it comes in and it's your family and you have to stand against your own family, can God count on you? Amen. Come on now. You know that's right. That's good preaching, Brother Benny. That's good preaching. I want to know, can God count on you? If revival's going to come to this church, God's got to count on somebody. Can God count on you in this revival? Can God count on you to pray? Huh? Huh, church? Can He count on you to fast? Can He count on you to stand in the gap and resist the devil? Can He count on you? When things get tight like they have been right here in this last 15 minutes, how I know can God count on you to stand by the preacher? That's right. When it used to get tight, holiness folks would get verbal. And now they get quiet like the Baptist. As long as you don't preach on sin, they're all right. Tell them they're going to heaven. They'll say, Amen. Tell them how good they are and they just want to shout and run. Come right down and tell them they're lazy because they're not fighting. Amen. They don't care because they're not resisting the devil. The revival's not here because we don't want it. Amen. All right, you want some scripture, right? Well, Jesus said, if, uh, if you ask anything in, the, in, my, in my name, the Father will do it for you. Have you asked for revival? I won't embarrass you. I won't even ask you to raise your hand because I can tell by looking in some of your eyes that you ain't even mentioned it. Well, this is not supposed to be camp meeting. This is camp meeting. This is not revival. What the world's a difference? When did we when did we start getting programs and separating the two? When holiness folks get together, it's revival, whether it's called camp meeting or whether it, whether it's called something else. We're out for revival. We're out to see souls saved. We're out to see the church challenged. We're out to see God's glory. We're out to see God's power. Amen. When I prayed about coming, I asked God for revival. I come to preach a revival. Amen. You say, you're not an evangelist. I'll do the one gets here. Amen. That's right. How about you? Have you been praying for one? Have you been praying at all? Amen. You young men, your strength young, your body without aches or pain, two weeks of camp meeting, or to war a hole in the carpet with your knees praying this thing through. Amen. If you can't be here at night, wear the carpet out through the day. Amen. That's the way we used to have revival, wasn't it? Tell me if I'm wrong. I'll stand corrected. Tell me if I'm wrong. Is there any other way to have it? Tell me, is there any other way to have it? You can have it the Baptist way. You can have it any other way. But holiness only no one way. And that's to pray it down from God out of heaven till the Holy Ghost gets so thick in this building that the saints weep and cry and sinners tremble. Hallelujah, till the Holy Ghost gets so thick that we walk on our tiptoes shouting glory. Hallelujah, till our singing rings and vibrates, till the Spirit of God goes out of these walls and grabs sinners. Amen. School's out. Still grabbing a ball glove and a basketball. Grab your Bible and find an altar. 
You teenagers need to join in and help the church pray this thing through. Amen. Instead of running off and looking for a boy who might be interested, look to Jesus because he is. He'll do you better than ten boyfriends. Amen. Because he won't leave you. Amen. When all them walk off, he'll still be there. Pray it through, my friend. Pray it through. God's got something he wants to do for Flatwood. I felt it when I come. I'm a preaching my heart out to you. I'm telling you God's got something he wants to do for you. I've got to get a hold of you. I'm running out of time. Hallelujah. I said I'm running out of time. Whether you know it or not, Jesus is counting on you to do something right here in this community. He counted on the church of God and look where it went. He counted on the assemblies and look where they went. Amen. He counted on the Methodists and look where they went. And the Nazarene had their day and look where they're at. And holiness now is getting just as pathetic as any of the rest of them because we don't want to fight for what we believe in. We want a revival without prayer. We want a revival without fasting. We want a revival without effort. We want somebody to come along with a, with a tuned up guitar. Amen. And sing us a song that shouts us and preach us a little sermonette and let us go home and tell everybody how good it is. But what we need is an old fashioned Holy Ghost revival that brings us to the altar and people put fingerprints back on the altar and wet this thing down with their tears, crown out and telling God, if there ever was a time, oh God Almighty, that you need to visit your people. It's in 1989. The devil's on the loose. Oh God, give us revival. God, count on you. Where are we going to find men at? Where are we find them at today? Huh? God, count on you. He's building His church. He'll not lose it because He can't count on you. I'll tell you the final end of the church that won't do what the Spirit of God says. He writes Ichabod on it. The glory has departed. The glory has left. And they joined the ranks of the congregation of the dead. Amen. We've got more dead churches now. They ought to have already been buried and the wake over with, and we could go on to revival. And if we're not careful, we'll get so sympathetic with this, uh, with this lethargy of just sitting around and going through three hymns. Uh, amen. And asking everybody if they got a song or something to say. I've got something to say. Have you heard me say it? We need revival. We need a stirring that gets down in our hearts that changes right here. Till our hearts are changed, we're not changed. Till our heart is changed and involved in what we're doing, we're not going to convince God we're serious. I ask you again, can God count on you? Can He? We pack Bibles, but can he? We, we go through all the forms, but can he count on us? Bow your heads. Oh. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, you that sent your son to purchase the church with his own blood. We stand before you tonight, the church of the living God. I ask you to breathe new life in us. May you do for us like you've done for the apostles when they were not what they should be. You confined them to a room. And then you filled that room with the presence of the Holy Ghost. Father, tonight I ask you in the name of Jesus 
Let the Spirit of God again come into the midst of the church. Touch people in their hearts. Ask them to make a commitment. Ask them, Father, as only you can. Ask them to make the commitment to follow you. Every head bowed. I'm asking you, listen to me, young ladies. I want you to know God's depending on you too. Young man, God's depending on you. Would you lift your hand up just before God, no one looking around. Slip it up and say, God, I want you to know you can depend on me. Here I am, Lord. Is there anyone? God bless your heart. God bless you. 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 My, it's getting good. God bless you. A few more volunteers. Anybody else that said, Lord, you can depend on me. If it means getting up in the middle of the night, I'll take my turn at prayer. Wake me up, Lord. If you need me, wake me up. Tap on my heart, Lord. I'm willing to crawl out and pray for revival. Is there another that you'd like to slip your hand up and say, Lord, you can depend on me. If you need somebody to fast tomorrow, Lord, here I am. I'm willing. I want to see the church revived. Would you slip your hand up before God? Say, Lord, you can depend on me. God bless you. God bless you. Is there any others? Oh, God bless your hearts. God bless your hearts. Now I'm going to ask you, as they play, if you'll come and pray. Praying that commitment that you just made to God, to this altar, and ask the Lord to give you grace to carry through with what you just said. Count on me, Lord. Count on me. Come from wherever you're at. If you'd like for God to count on you, come. Bring your heart and make your commitment tonight to God. Let's have revival.